Have you ever wondered how communication evolves as an academic discipline? In fact, our history tells us that men and women from all cultures have been interested in observing and theorizing about the role of communication in multiple contexts, be it in government, politics, law, religion, technology, and education. Thus, it's important that we have a glimpse of communication's historical perspective. According to John Locke, communication is the mechanism by which humans coexist in a society without compromising their individual sovereignty. It was Locke who coined the term communication and gave it its modern meaning. However, the word communication did not exist back then. The idea of communication is simply in the form of rhetoric and dialogue. So how did it all start? 2,500 years ago in Greece, people placed huge importance on spoken word and argumentation skills, highlighting emotion and logic to persuade others. The classical period is where the Fantastic Four established the foundation of communication studies. Aspasia, although hidden in the male-dominated public sphere, was intellectual, progressive, and feminist. Socrates is known for the Socratic method. Plato, on the other hand, placed an emphasis on dialogue and dialectics and Aristotle, who introduced the structure of rhetoric. During this period, more scholars emerged as well, such as Corax, Theseus, Cicero, and Quintilian, who extended the work of the Fantastic Four, which resulted to the five canons of rhetoric. Then there comes the Dark Ages of the Greco-Roman period. The medieval period is dominated by Christianity, so secular education was very, very scarce. The church condemned the works in the classical period and regarded them as pagan. However, Augustine Lateran found grace in the works of Plato, Aristotle, and Cicero, in which he Christianized their ideas and enabled the church to adopt the rhetoric in homilies and sermons. Fast forward to 1400s to 1600s CE, where the Renaissance period is powered by a new intellectual movement. In this period, secular institutions and governments started to compete with the church for personal allegiances. Scholars like Leonard Cox, who published The Art or Craft of Rhetoric, which is the first English language book on communication. Petrus Ramus, who paid great attention to the idea of style by grouping style and delivery of the five canons together. And brave women scholars such as Christine de Pisan and Laura Serretta, who empowered women's speech acts in both public and private matters. All their works were of great contribution into a full-blown examination of communication. Finally, the Enlightenment period. This is where modernization, such as the printing press, made the written word more widely accessible to people through newspapers and books. Scholars like Golden, Berkis, and Coleman pointed to four prominent trends, that is, the neoclassicism, the eclectic method of beltristic scholars, the psychological or epistemological school of rhetoric, and the locutionary approach. This era served as a bridge between the past and the present of communication study, the old and the new school.